Hello and welcome to This Contains Garlic. You are here with your host, Georgia Garlic and... Mark Garlic. And we're back for another episode of the podcast. I've had too much caffeine today. I've had quite a, I've had two cups plus a scoop and a half of pre-workout, so... I, uh, I know, I know when I've had too much pre-workout because my teeth start to hurt. I just start feeling very anxious. I was training today and I thought, fuck, I feel anxious. Better have a coffee to just top that up. Mm. I do it to myself. It's all self-inflicted. Uh, there's a new study that's just been released with regards to caffeine intake and sleep performance with regards to... Does it impinge your sleep quality and duration obviously consuming it prior to going to sleep and the conclusion is drum roll please it does (laughs) have a negative impact if you're going to have the bolus amount of caffeine you need to be having it at least 8 to 12 hours prior to sleeping but what they did eight find to twelve. Was, Fuck, well, that's my sleep done today. Yeah, what they <laughs> what they did find was things like diet coke, black black tea, things that had uh, smaller amounts of caffeine had no impact on sleep quality and duration prior to sleeping. Which Sounds good. I'll make another coffee. Um, yeah. Such a party pooper. You know what I mean? It's just like somebody's having a great time here. Highly anxious, too much caffeine, and Mark's put you back in your box. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you, though. Like, um... I do obliterate myself with caffeine sometimes. Yeah. We saw, I've seen quite a big change in my anxiety overall in the sense of I'm a highly anxious person. I don't think there's, there's a part of the day where I don't overthink things at like 15 times of 15 different cycles of life. But that would also probably be ADHD, but the, Mm. (laughs) the, I don't know. I, I, I kind of get to a point with caffeine where I I say to myself, like, fuck enough is enough. And recently my anxiety has been actually a lot better. And I think I put it down to the fact that for the Mm. environment's sake, we stopped drinking Nespresso pods Mm. because we we would annihilate like on average, probably like four to five pods a day. Like maybe. I would say probably, yeah. It may be six. Remember there's two of us, so. Two pods per serving. So that's a minimum of four. No, not on the virtue machines. We don't do two pods. That's savage. No, not the virtue, but the one prior to that. Yeah, we were caning. And I don't believe they recycle them. And I have to say, say like my biggest weaknesses in life for like the environment is probably one definitely not travel because I've been on a fucking airplane for ages I can't wait to go away mm. the end of this year I can't I literally well actually in September I can't wait I just can't wait to go away fuck um, <laughs> um but is plastic water bottle use mm, yeah we've, um, we've really revolutionized that I'm not gonna we? lie I shoplift on a daily basis yeah. uh, I never pay for a plastic bag yeah. uh, I always avoid that on the self-checkout that's definitely something I'm not proud of uh, I now have a collection I'm of like 460 16 MS bags in the no, cupboard. I'm proud. The, those companies are making enough profit to they can uh, they can deal with a plastic bag. And I think it's the fact that if you pay for it, you're less likely to pay for it, means you won't use it. And now we've got 462 fucking MS bags in the cupboard that mm. are not used, but they're not in a, like a tortoise they're nostril, there. a turtle's nostril. That, that started to affect me because mm. I kept on seeing things from like the ocean and stuff where. I was like, oh my God, like I'm killing Mm. animals with like all my plastic. So we now, obviously, since having our like Yeti sippy cups, I've had that, what, for six months now? I've probably been using Yeti. Yeah, it's a lot more hygienic. Is use. it? Because yours is disgusting. Like, Mark no, doesn't I wash his properly. No, you fucking don't. You drink everything from it. I only mm. drink water from my Yeti cup. You'll put Diet Coke, you'll put mm. a smoothie in there, you'll mm-hmm. put creatine. Like, mm-hmm. and then he has the audacity to open mine and drink from it. Like, that is a complete ick. Yeah. Like, I've got a couple mm-hmm. of icks, haven't I, that you've realised yeah. I've got. What is the one? One is drinking from a Red Bull, like an energy an energy drink can. Is it? Mark came back about a few weeks ago drinking a, what was it, a monster yeah, it mango. A monster and I was just mango. like, get out of my delicious. face. It's just such an ick. It's just such an ick. I don't know what it is. I don't know why energy drinks oh. just give me the ick. There's a couple of things you do that really do give me the ick. And one of them like is what? touching my shit. I don't touching believe... I don't touch your shit. Oh my god, you're in my shit. That's the difference. Is there's you're not just touching it, you're fucking around it, in it, on it, inside it. I don't know what the fuck. You're always there. (laughs) You're always there. Yeah, well we we um Yeah, but you are. But you believe that is what is mine is yours, and I believe what is mine is mine. Do you know what I mean? And what is yours is also mine. Yeah. (laughs) I also believe that, you know. 
That, that what? What do you believe, Mark? That aliens are going to take over? I believe that as long as my wife's happy, I'm happy. Yeah, that's a bit pathetic, isn't it? To be quite honest with you. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, we're the complete opposite, aren't we? Yeah, I know. <laughs> opposites attract, though, don't they? Yeah, I definitely don't think it like that. I just get annoyed when you like try and like compliment me. Like people would be like, "You're such a cunt." You are. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the anyway. Not to, to anybody me. else, I'm not. To to you, I might be. Yeah, yeah. the most important person. Yeah, because I literally, give me a fucking break. I sometimes feel like I'm in, like, a small fish tank in a house. Like, genuinely, I feel like I'm trapped. And it's just a normal feeling because we spend all the time together. Don't get the violin out for you. No, I'll just jump out the window behind you. privileged individual. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying that you're in my space a lot. And it would be abnormal if I didn't get annoyed with her. Like, if I was just so obsessed with you the whole time, like, that would be so weird. That'd be yeah, it would be quite strange. Yeah, because you're like the you're the opposite. Do you know what I mean? Exactly opposite. Would you say on a day to day basis you're like obsessed with me? Yeah, I'd say pretty much. <laughs> that's worrying. We need some marriage counselling. Oh, um, no, fucking exactly joking. I just wanna you know get. Because you're like with the most opposite person I to give you a compliment. Those, I want to get in the flaps. Um, Please, I'm honestly, a, like I'm when a, people refer to very... vaginas with flaps, all you can think is that it's overstretched, it's ugly, it's hanging from all different directions, it doesn't even fit in a thong. I don't no, even fucking the know. Beef curtains no, are the beef just, curtains. The beef Mark, curtains are just all over the place. I don't have. Oh no, my, I'm not saying you don't have beef curtains. I've got. Fuck. And also, it's not the colour of beef. Do you know what I mean? Like, please stop know. saying that. What the fuck, Mark? Not your vagina. No, no. well, who else are you talking about then? That you've been... just, I'm just saying there could be various shades of vagina that potentially could look like beef. Roast yeah, it's beef. more like a ham sandwich. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. all I'm <laughs> but hams can also vary, you know, depending if it's. I'd say gammon is probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite like I'm a mid skin colour, do you know what I mean? I'm not like super pale, but I'm also not super tanned. So like mm. but when I go tanned, I can go tanned. You can you do go very brown. Yeah. yeah. Although like, yeah, not that that's happening in the UK. The weather's been a bit shit, but anyway. Um It doesn't be that bad. It's actually the past couple of days has been horrible, but fairly recently it's been quite pleasant. Well, I'm wearing a long sleeve top and I wore a hoodie to train in and that's when I know yeah. that I'm in winter kit. Okay? People always give me like comments like, How can you train in that? It's like because I can do you know what I mean? mm. <laughs> Literally, like, because I love training in long I don't know I don't see the need I find gyms so gross and especially I'm sorry to say this but especially the hygiene of the one that we go to I will not be transferring my skin onto things that I don't need to honestly I'm going to end up with like some kind of infection staff infection y- yeah that's that was it I was talking to a client the other day I was like oh you mm. know we once knew somebody that had staff infection mm. on their stomach uh, was Hendrick it? Oh, his Hendrick had it arm, as well, he yeah. Had it on his, he had it on his arms. So. Disgusting. And it all comes down to hygiene. And, like, mm. you honestly do look at some people in the gym. I think, I don't think you showered you at least, sweat, I don't think yeah. you've showered in the last 24 hours, let alone the last 48. And you stink, do you know what I mean? Like, you it's, literally just stink. And you've a, got shoes that are covered in shit. Like, mm, I, if a, I run a, a gym. It's eating bacteria that eats the muscle and tendons in your body. And if you leave it unchecked, you have to get your arms or limbs amputated yeah it's actually disgusting and it can kill you it's one of the only few infections that can actually kill you i do i kind of appreciate like why like women would train in like a sports bra in the gym but i kind of think i only did that when i was in my own gym because i fucking knew Mm. where my skin was going and the fact that it was highly sanitized and like very very clean but like honestly sometimes like i'm doing some like mobility on the floor today i was i thought oh my Mm. god this is disgusting like i literally was just like we i always antibacterial my hands before i go in that was the one benefit of covid Mm, antibacterial everywhere uh, wipes and gels and Oh, I, I love, I love an mm. anti. I love a disinfectant spray. I, this is the thing; it's not great for the environment, is it? It's all for the toxins in the no, house. No, no. But I but still spray to, it everywhere. We used to clean that our gym in Cape Town until it was spotless. 
There was never like hair, dust, dirt. Never. Like if, first never. of all, our clientele were not the kind of cretins that like would be doing this, but people that no, turn sure. up in gyms with like mud all over their shoes and like, you know, I just think how disrespectful is that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody's got to now clear that up because you've just trampled it into the gym. The problem is I honestly think that the gym's blind to like the cleanliness. I just, I think it's, they're blind. Like they'll hoover everywhere so but long. where they need to hoover. It's weird. Yeah, it's hella, hella rank. I thought you said Helen. <laughs> no, it's just, I was just dating, like when you go and use utilize some of the equipment and you look into the corner and you just see like furballs and hairballs. Talking of Helen, do you remember that psycho that used to like fucking contact me the whole time on Instagram, Helen? Oh. I can't say the last name because it'd be bad on here, but like, fuck, that was just non-stop oh, contacting. Yeah, weird. No, that was that was that was board that was that weird. was borderline. Like There's maybe like I when, get you, a when you on. communicate with with people, obviously running an online business, you communicate with some people online, and it's generally. You oh, know, it's not been like that bad time, at all. It's, it's in the you last know, It's years. quite uh, a pleasant experience, and then you got ten percent of people being dickheads, and then you got ten percent of just some people being quite strange i do feel like we're just like british people though especially like because we we have an international market but you know i do think there is a general tone like in the uk which is just so pessimistic the whole time do you know what i mean we'll find like a problem before there's like no, actually no, enjoying no. something no, there's no. always a problem with something i just think what is wrong with you do you know what i mean like just get on with it like just get on with life it's not that bad but you know we haven't had that much disrespect on social media we've definitely changed a lot like we've changed a lot mm. like you know mm. we always used to be kind of what we are now mm. but then we changed ourselves quite a lot not changed ourselves but changed just a lot in the way that we communicated with people and like we didn't really like it to be quite honest with you and that's why we've just like we've done a whole 360 in our own mindsets our business what, everything what topics are controversial and what topics are not controversial and we just uh, don't I also think the more you put yourself yeah. to like a business, there's some people that are just like not going to like there you. There are a lot of people fine. that, and especially in the fitness industry, that are virtue signalers that will, you know, placate on different uh, topics and trends at that given moment, you know, trying to feed off current events with regards to the flavor of the month mm. that open themselves up to a lot of, you know, yeah, I feel For like example, some people that like... that, that uh, gentleman that we know that when Grenfell Tower Tower was on fire, he was like, "Oh, I'm so sad. Here's my discount code," and people were like, "Bro." Like that's what so are you sick doing? in the head. Yeah. yeah, what are you doing? The thing is, though, I think people are getting. I I said this. I called this from like probably the end of last year. In fact, I probably got it on record. For record on recording from our podcast, but mm. like we're definitely seeing a change like this this last week obviously we've had a new social platform launch mm. do you know what I mean which is like what the fuck we knew it was coming because we knew that obviously technically when when Twitter fired a load of people technically Meta then took them on so mm. the obviously Zuckerberg took them on and Twitter is and right now is probably the most vulnerable social platform to like being annihilated yeah. you know so they struck where they could, but like, fuck, I mean, when it all changed, we were all like, what the fuck's going on now? Like, mm. how do we use this? Okay, right, okay, so everybody have my opinion. I hope you like it. Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I, do, find, I, I, I did... I don't find threads as entertaining as, or like as engaging as video content. I find it chaotic, not chaotic, but I find the recommendations... That you, that you find on your explore Mark, feed or your discovery feed. Please just feed pay is, attention. They haven't done anything to the algorithm no, yet. They've just launched that. it. So they're going to now refine it. The whole thing was getting people users on it and then refine it to see, you know, how do they know what people like in the sense yeah. of like Twitter, no, like tweets? That. Like they don't know but until they literally trial it and see who gravitates towards yeah, most content. No, okay. But the I reality is, is that like... I find you've always liked videos. You've always watched YouTube and shit. But like, yeah. I also learn so well when it's not videos. Like, I I, I can appreciate like there has to be a mix. Like, mm. I think teaching somebody if it's not exercise mm. or like how to cook or something mm. like that mm. needs to be in written form. There's only a reason why like majority of schools still run by textbooks for childrens because like our learning process 
is so much better and more like it's more in depth than it is watching videos the whole time because mm. at least you're reading, writing, remembering things. And I think with videos, like it's so easy just to forget what somebody's just said. <laughs> Literally, unless some you want to... people are more visual learners and some people are more. I'm you definitely know, a visual learner, learning. but I don't necessarily think I need to listen to somebody on a video or watch them to actually learn. Like I'm visual, like maybe visually in the sense I of just, like I would say I, I would be almost the opposite. What do you mean? All you do is fucking research shit when even when you don't need yeah, to. Yeah, but I would, I would prefer to maybe watch a video w that is combined with text than just reading text. Do you know what? Time. It's because you're brought up, all your parents do is watch the TV. Yeah, All sure. they do is watch the TV. It's actually mm. astounding. It's honestly astounding. There's like nothing how... else to do in Zimbabwe, though. They're not in fucking Zimbabwe, Mark. Yeah, but they see, they've created and formed their habits. Yes, based oh, thank you for just spelling out like the most like fucking logical thing but yeah they do watch a lot of tv yeah. and it's weird because like you could you're okay completely okay in like long car journeys you're like completely okay just watching shit do you know what i mean and i just get so annoyed like, i just don't have the patience for it yeah but i feel like that could be a gender-based uh stereotype i think some men could would uh, agree or at least in what confirm. sense i don't i just if you look at the, the analytics of, of YouTube, it's predominantly men versus women. So that must mean, you know, 70% of YouTube's traffic is men, 30% of YouTube's traffic is women. So that would, assume, you could make a statistical probability that men favor video content over women. Well. And then you would probably say that depending on... I would Maybe say it's because men Instagram... have got more time when they sit on the fucking toilet for 35 minutes going for a shit or just a piss or just to like go in there and they end up watching or playing a video game for 35 minutes and then they think that if they do that like three times a day they're actually going to be productive in their life. Cough, cough, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fucking dick because I'm yeah. sick of it. I get, like, I'm like, literally, I can hear the guns going off in the bathroom and it's not even coming out of your asshole. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, it's so annoying. Mark's like, yeah, I'm doing something. It's like, you're not doing anything. I'm like, what a, what a counterproductive, what a waste of time. Do you know what I mean? Then Mark's got the audacity to come in. Oh, it's 5 p.m. already. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, because you sat on the toilet for half the day. You yeah, you're think. too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just literally you're. You can't don't have anything to say because you know that it's correct. I just. Um... Yeah, you've got nothing to say. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do love sitting on the toilet. Yeah, it's like, do you know? It's just yeah. a very peaceful place. It's a very you know. It's Utah. Yeah, and guess what? Mark will put the light on, even though he doesn't need the light on in the bathroom. Mm. We don't need yeah. the light on in the bathroom. It's light outside. And then he yeah, leaves the light on. Yeah, when you close the, the door, it's dark in it. There's yeah, no well, sit in it and mellow in it. You've got your screens, do you know what I mean? Okay. You don't need to turn the lights on. Okay. Do you, you should be more switched on with this because you're African than I am, but you shouldn't wow. be wasting electricity. No, I have to clean the toilet after you use it and you go in there and leave oh, skid marks. Oh, do you know what? Is that the only comeback you've got? Is the fact, oh, we're going to bring up the fact you might <laughs> shit yourself in there. Do you know what I mean? Really? Is that all you've got? No, I'm just saying. Like... You know you're going to get annihilated. You're not quick enough. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that being said, haven't used the oven so long. Barring making tortilla pizzas, the air fryer, I never thought I'd be that person, but we literally do everything in the air fryer, yeah, we don't do. we? Yeah. Well, and a pan. It's very handy. Really yeah, it is very hard. But anyway, today, talking of food or cooking, we're going to talk about you are what you eat. Or are you what you yeah, eat? Yeah, I think so. Okay, Mark, thanks. Is that the end of the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, like... Catch if, up with us next time. Thank yeah. you. Goodbye. Everyone will have known in the UK especially when Gillian McKeith, who was that sort of like pesky... That's the thing, you're African. But why don't you listen and then you'd learn? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is okay. it's not visually enticing for you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, or you're obsessed and you can stare at me whilst I'm speaking. Um, Gillian McKeith was a dietitian who had a TV programme on, mm. I think, maybe Channel 4 or something like that, mm. which mm. was You Are What You Eat. Mm. And 
um, she used to, <laughs> she used to get like fat people. It's always fat people. I remember because I was fat at the time watching mm, it. Mm. And she used to get them to like shit into a box, do you know what I mean? And then she'd like assess their poo and be like, oh, this is so unhealthy, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then she'd like tell you like what to eat. And obviously she was this like horribly rounded, shouldered, like tiny, tiny. Do you know what? Whilst think, we're talking um, about this, let's get a photo so you know I'm talking about. Do you think the woman about. had a fetish for, for sure? No, but that was just that she used to assess the poo to know whether yeah, or not. I think that's a really quite a strange. Job. I appreciate the uh, the significance. Of this is Gillian McKeith. Jesus, not very flattering photo that. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't like to be a judgmental individual, but I certainly wouldn't want to take health advice from somebody. I know it's quite. She is. She is Scottish though. I love Scottish people. We've got a lot of Scottish yeah, clients at the moment. Big, Might move to up, Scotland at this rate. Yeah, big up the Scottish. Yeah, we've got loads of people all over. Brethren. It's great. Um, hi, Scottish clients. Um, Gillian McKeith is a Scottish TV person. I just want to move can to Scotland. Can you listen to me? So I can you don't know who I'm talking about. And have no underpants on. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. Because I just would absolutely just wank you off at any chance if you were wearing a fucking given skirt. Moment, I'd be really. You honestly, like just you make me, again, another ick. Do you know what I mean? You honestly think that having balls dangling and a dick out is yeah. attractive. Do you know what I mean? Like, nobody. I don't know. Some women might disagree with me. I think it's like the most unattractive like form of a man. What? A penis? And yeah, it's just like so in your face. Like I'd rather have like tucked away bits, you know what I mean? Like not just out and about the whole time, you know? Mm. Out and about. May, may, I don't know. Mm. Easier to go to the toilet in public. Mm. You know I mean? Yeah, that is one, you know, massive benefit of having a... Oh, yes. so anyway, she's got as her little her bio, Scottish TV personality bio mm, that mm. she's known for her promotion of various pedo scientific <laughs> ideas about health and nutrition. She is the former pseudo, host. Pseudo, not pedo. You said pedo sign. <laughs> Did I just pedos. say pedo sign? Yeah, pseudo. Go back on that. Did I just say? I think you just heard that one correctly. Okay, maybe I saw Maybe it's correct. dyslexia. Who knows? She is the former host of Channel 4's You Are What You Eat. Okay, so mm. tech... Oh, my God, she's got another programme, Eat Yourself Sexy. I wouldn't exactly call you sexy, Gillian. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Is Dr. Gillian McKeith a real doctor? Do you have to... Although do Gillian you... is not a medical doctor, she integrates and confers with various medical doctors she for her. She identifies as a, doc as a doctor, which is fine. Oh, my God, that's so not okay. She's done a whole TV programme calling herself Dr. Gillian McKeith, and she's not even a fucking doctor. Yeah, but that's just part of the course in this industry. Anybody, it's like make-believe. You can just be whatever you want. Not when it's known that you're not a doctor. Well, <laughs> it doesn't... It's not exactly the most sellable show when it's like, well, who is this woman? She is nobody. She She's just a random person. She's not. Mark, do you know what? She's not because you don't know who she is and now you're thinking she's random. She's actually no, very well saying, known in no, the I'm UK. I'm just saying, it, for you to sell the program, it would make uh, about health and fitness, you would want it to come from a doctor. Yeah, but like, just because, like, this also annoys me, just because you're like, a, maybe you're nutritionally well inclined. So what is inclined. the premise of the show with regards to... Well, you are people, what you eat, it just people, tells people to eat so better. So all she did was just sift through people's shit and then tell them to eat vegetables. I can't remember if there was one, if this is the same program, but there was definitely another program, I can't remember what it was called, where they used to, like, the line up all the food they yes, ate. the one they swapped diets, that was very entertaining. Mm. Yeah, that was actually kind of disgusting. But it was also yeah, quite twisted. But like with the weight loss programs and stuff like that on TV are just so bad. Like the same with like just because you're a nutritionist doesn't mean you're also a strength trainer. Like this, it's like just because somebody's in health doesn't mean they're all health. Do you know well, what I mean? Or that like famous all... uh, meme of that guy who was like, "Welcome to meeting the fattiest, fattest people in Britain, the fattest family." <laughs> Of morbidly obese fat people. <laughs> oh my god! You know what? Like I used to be called fat all the time, so I, I can't. Like I think it's the most like horrible thing to be called fat. But that mm. being said, I was I. I'll use the words overweight and coming from a professional. The mm. other day we went out. Where were we in London and Camden? And I was just actually like just amazed at how many overweight people there actually mm. currently is. Mm. Like you know, in London it's one of these things. Like depending on where you were in London. I guess when we were in uh, Marlebone, uh, there were you know everybody was literally in shape or yeah, not in it's shape, because obviously but they were well, they always say that thin is privileged, size. don't they? Which is funny, isn't it? Because yeah. they've got more money to fucking buy well, you food. you think we, we were talking about this the other day with regards to the, you know, the the original fitness influencers who used to 
who used to and still do prey on the general population with trying to be relatable when they roll their stomachs into contort their bodies into fat rolls oh, um, yeah, the vast end. majority of them are c- come from a very affluent you know privileged background where the reality is is being fat or being overweight is is not socially acceptable in those certain areas and the vast majority of those girls that pretend to be relatable are not fat or have ever been fat a single day in their entire life yeah i mean to be honest with you i don't think a man can make comment on that to be quite honest with you but the reality is is that they've gone through different transitions in life and like we've always said like i think you know there's like there's like fat people and there's you know what you would classify as a middle class to upper class individual yeah but it doesn't mean just because you're overweight that you're non-existent no i'm not saying who's overweight for the 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 socio-economic environment in which they are placed on a regular basis i think to be honest with you like you know only the reality is is that like there's always going to be the difference and divide of those that have ability and those that don't do you know what I mean and you know you can never try and like I think with the things that are likes like social media and the amount of usage on that like billions of people all connected mm. to each other which is absolutely the worst idea on planet earth but mm. you know anyway mm. we'll carry on encouraging it um you know it's put us all into these things of just like all we do is like either think about other people and their lives or mm. what they're doing yeah. weigh it up against our life what we're doing mm-hmm. like constantly over analyze like you know we put ourselves currently in the mm. worst health situation literally just comparing ourselves to other people yeah, I mean, like all all a lot of people's like young not necessarily school age young like but you know mm. maybe like in the 20s or 30s do you know mm. how many like people are going through extensive mental health issues at the moment because they're like oh my god but at 24 this person's got this and i'm fucking 30 and i don't have close to that and all people are doing is weighing up like i don't give a fuck what you eat what car you fucking drive who you are what i literally don't care i don't care and you know the people that want the most rise from it get so upset when you don't give it the attention of the day but Mm. it's like all these younger generations looking up to people like this is what this is my daily routine do you know what i mean it's like i don't give a fuck and neither should anybody else you know i just think it's come to the but point the where so is people do though people do care no they That's don't why. care they're forced to care no, there's no way that care. they okay. in their head thought if somebody hadn't posted true. their body 10 times fucking That's every so day true, yeah. somebody wouldn't care about what they ate on a day-to-day basis people only find... care what somebody eats on a day-to-day basis because they're in shape do you not also find that the that the people that put out the message that it's okay to look the way that you look and so on and so forth really drive home that they care about the way that they look well, yeah, I mean, there's this whole thing where I think it's so weird. Like, there's a number of, there's a couple of influences you could say that came from a different extreme, which is like eating disorders into like becoming yeah. this fit person. And I've got a real thing about this because mm. you physically, mm. if you have struggled with an eating disorder in your life, like a physical eating disorder that mm. completely broke you to the point where you had to have like external mm. help and guide yourself year and year after, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Why the fuck are you now promoting as a business of people to lose weight? I don't understand. Like, mm. you're putting out two contradictory things here. Because like, I guess at the end of the day, it's the most pertinent goal. All they for... mention is, like, I'm going to be in shape. I'm going to do my challenge. I'm going to fucking look amazing. I'm mm. going to do this. And it's like, you're mm. so unaware that actually what you're saying is con- contradicting the whole mm. of your business Literally. and everything you ever have done, you know? The first step to realizing you have a problem is when you do body checks constantly but every piece of content, content that is I body put up is me checking my body prior to doing any topic oh it's me brushing my teeth hold on let me just whack a bikini on and show you my ass or just lift my top up and just hope yeah. that i've got some yeah. sort of visibility yeah. and oh so bloated today i yeah. s- honestly and just fucking like, hate I've it i've overcome my eating disorder wink wink and you're like okay yeah okay i don't think you have yeah. and i also don't think you should have a platform to share it but you know no. but the thing is then if you can't talk about building muscle losing weight you know the very generic things that people talk about that don't require they don't that much sell your story then then what do you talk about 
Yeah, but then don't so you know you could have a market helping people like not have to focus on like you know those that I'll have. I'll give you an example. You're not qualified to do so. That's the reality. Someone like Bradley Simmons the other day who talks about building muscle. The man's never built a pound of muscle since we've known him. Do you know what I mean? For 10, 13 years that he's been on Instagram, you know, he looks exactly the same as he did, which is great. He's in shape and so on and so forth. I'm not oh, yeah, shape, but whatever, because what, what, is like, that like an analogy to being amazing? Do you know no, mean? but it's like talking about, it's, you know, going on and you like, you have to talk and cover certain topics that you may or may not. You know. Well, I think people think differently, like unless the only way you see it as contradictory, though, do they? Yeah, well, no, they don't see it as contradictory. But I also think there's an element where it's incredibly engaging to a fact. And I think, you know, there has to be some, and like, we'll be brutally honest, there's got to be some give and take with like content production where like some of it's got to be relatively engaging so that you get traction and you start conversation and you run a fucking business, you know. But I also just find it just... <laughs> yeah, but you don't, on, like you said, you I don't find it painful listening to these people because they have no idea what they're talking about, and you can tell they say certain things that they brush over, like a sentence. I think, wait, if you go back and just listen to mm. what you just said, it doesn't mm. make any sense. Like, no. and it's the same with like I. Oh, I think. Oh no, we can't slander. No, I wonder no, if we people. Can't. I know we we can't, can't slander, but you're on the same person that we've just spoken about. <sighs> I won't repeat the name. Yeah, I know. Was doing like oh maybe I'm, we should one day, and that's just just we just come out guns blazing. The thing, the I'm thing is, like, I had this, much. I had this like... conversation with with uh, with our client, and she was going on about like, I don't understand how you guys cope with, uh, you know, everybody, you know, contradicting themselves, putting out uh, uh, contradictory messages, putting out fad diets, putting out diet culture, so on and so forth. How you guys deal with it on a day to day basis, and sometimes the reality is is you got to just say it how it is. Well, I think me and you are slightly different on that. Like, I, I can definitely say it how it is because I'm incredibly realistic. I can also speak from the fact of an experienced point of view. I won't pipe my fucking mouth when I'm literally not certain on what I'm fucking saying, no, you know. But... I, I guess but, also just, like, criticising other people is not exactly the most... It's like, shit. Why do you have to bring other people down? Exactly. You're not going to get, like, anything more from yeah. that, you know. That's it's not so going to bring in an encouraging manner. Yeah, that's why we don't do it. But I just... I get, I get just fucking annoyed it. when, you know... <sighs> The problem is, and if you're listening to this, maybe you're a client of ours, or maybe you're not a client of ours, and you're just an avid listener of our podcast. Like, if you're avidly looking, maybe you're looking at our content. I don't know. Like, you see our content on social media. The likelihood is, if you engage with us, which obviously, please do. Do you know what I mean? You know, you're then going to see like a tirade of other sort of fitness or coaching or whatever. Mm. And like, you know the reality is is there's so many of us out there and what's brought us all in the same pool do you know what I mean for you all to see is social media and I think it comes to a point where you shouldn't be ingraining this information from people like ha like I'll be honest be fucking intelligent please do you know what I mean you don't have to look at everything and think that that's the next best option or I should do that because they're doing it just remember you, you to get anywhere you still need to self-reflect so if you're self-reflecting on that and going well, obviously, it's just only going to work for them. Why should I read into this? Why is it even phasing me? Sometimes you need to tell yourself, like, why am I even ingraining this information? Like, mm. what is what is the point of this? Like, I say this mm. to Mark all the time. If we are, like, our day-to-day, -day, obviously, there's a lot of social work on there because, obviously, like, our business runs online. But, like, if we're not, we don't go on Instagram now, like, to just like fucking mull around we're trying really hard not to because it's mm. it's for business purposes mm. Mm. and like we love running our business mm. we have a huge passion for it mm. but you know it's also incredibly draining when you've spent like your whole day you know from 4 a.m in the morning on your phone till yeah, like you know on your laptop your phone, on your phone yeah. on your laptop on your phone mass amounts of messages things to get back to content to create i mean yesterday i actually felt sick i'd stared at like my fucking screen too much All you know day. so when it comes to actually using your time you know we've got endless amounts of platforms and people's time is becoming just like people just don't spend much time on anything other than their fucking phone like no. honestly and you've got the likes of tiktok which luckily i've never i just can't be asked i just really yeah, i just too, it's, it's too it's, it's just too no much, i don't need much. that i just don't need that yeah um yeah. not even for our business i'm not even interested it's, i mean you know generally speaking with regards to um you know i never 
personally have never really posted like personal stuff on social media or just on the internet in general um i'd only kind of used it for clients and you know showcasing a body of work with regards to that so like if we weren't if i didn't need to utilize social media i don't think i would yeah i mean because all the all the important people that need to communicate with me and 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 i'm in contact with and i care about and i value have all got my phone number and that are actively happy to talk and phone on whatsapp and chat and you know until the cows come home but no, but I think that's ra- mm, just a, a bunch of random people. Yeah. You know okay. I mean? Well, so, I I don't agree with that. I think that like there's a very strong element of our life which is like dictated by that. Should we want to con- like continue the way that we're going? And you know, yeah, you might not have been used to the internet, but you still spend half your fucking day on it. So you can't no, exactly I'm just say that you're like the most in a in a in a parallel universe where we didn't have to rely on the internet. I don't think I would be utilizing social media. Yeah, because you'd probably have a shit business if that was the case. I'm Let's not be honest. Like, hypothetically, if I didn't rely on my business being on social media. Hypothetically, okay. Well, you can live in dreamland because that's not the case right now. If anything, it's only going to get worse. Um, but no, I do just think like because going off of the fact of like you know, are you are what you eat? Like, this is a fucking problem in the nutritional world because I just can't. I just I'm sick of seeing it. You've got the nutritional influencers who like put together meals all with some sort of microbiome fucking sprinkles mm. and you know what I mean? And this and the, that where it's just so unrealistic for your day to day person. Nah, sprinkled nuts. Then you've got people who are like still avidly put like, there's obviously the whole um, thing that's come out about aspartame with Diet Cokes mm. recently. And like, mm. is this really damaging our health? And it's been linked to cancer and all of that. Mm. It's never not mm. been linked to cancer. Do you know what mm. I mean? In fact, everything's linked to cancer. Too In fact, the only out. thing that people haven't linked to cancer, wow, is alcohol. Funny that. In fact, they tell you to drink red wine, do you know what I mean? Instead of fucking not drink it. The only thing that has not been annihilated in the press or the media is alcohol. Well, it's like, starting to be now. Mm, yeah, to the point, yeah, but only the, the, the spend on that is less because mm. you've got, like, large corporations of, like, alcohol companies outweighing the small non-alcohol company, you know what mm. I mean? And the reality is, is there's it's money to be made. Ingrained, ingrained in society that, you know, you need, you know, if you're stressed out, you need to have a drink. If you want to have a good time, you need to have a drink. If you want to, you know, X, Y, and Z, you need to have a drink, so... No, and look, like, each their own. I'm, if you can hold it in moderation, do what the fuck you want. We all do things that yeah. fucking please us or satisfy us or do something. Yeah, but the fact I that, think it's that, just that the is fact... not going to be a contributing factor towards being a carcinogenic that is going to drive genetic mutation that causes cancer... You know, no, but something going that back you do to... that on a regular basis con- c- compared to drinking a Diet Coke every once in a while doesn't seem to be a logical bridge to kind of I just find it I find it ve- like there's very few people like for example you'll see the people eating microbiome sprinkles all over their food but also then having uh, multiple uh. drinks on the weekend you know mm. what I mean and mm. vice versa like those that who you know I don't think nobody is perfect no. in there what they do like no. nobody is perfect we've all got these vices to effectively challenge yes. us and to satisfy us and to yeah. give us some element of just mm. fucking monotony like you know and the reality is is are are you what you eat i think yes to a certain degree like yeah. if you eat a highly processed diet you know mm. what i mean with zero substance are you mm. mentally going to feel good or physically you know be able to like perform no. in any way no you're not in and it's known to you know highly processed diets obviously linked yeah. to a mass amount of mental health disorders as well and it's known that one of the first interventions barring me- medication depending on how good it is or not you know exercise and nutrition have been the two you know principles that people need to look mm. to improving mm. if they want their mental health to also improve now please obviously there are anomalies to that you know that do very much need medication yeah. but it's just the primary factor that we do it you know but if your diet on a day-to-day basis is sort of I'd say on average like 70% like nutrient dense and then like 30% yeah. is yeah. looking to explore just like having fun then I actually think you've got the best balance yeah, because sure. the reality is and we say this time and time again when anybody comes on board with us they're always like okay well 
I can do this for, you know, they'll say to us on a concert, oh, I can do this. Oh, yeah, I've got this. I can do it for 12, 16 weeks. It's like, it's not that mentality you need to have going on board. It's like, actually, it's not just 12 and 16 weeks that you need to be doing this for. Your nutrition, like I will bang on about all the time, is literally what keeps you fucking alive on a day-to-day mm-hmm. basis. So, yeah, okay, it's having a shit day of food, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it does mm. nothing, you know? It's the repetitive behaviour of it yeah, that's obviously going to... But are you going to notice that in the first couple of months to... No, if your diet's always been pretty average, you know what I mean? You're probably not going to notice a significant difference in your health or yourself until probably years later, to be quite honest with you. It's only those mm. that completely... I think it also depends on where the person is within regards to their own personal journey. Like if you're excessively overweight or morbidly obese and you're able to, um, you know, maybe not address the nutrient density of your diet but are able to control calorie intake and expenditure, then you are going to see you know, some benefits with regards to your overall health market. I'm not talking about, like, them losing weight. I'm talking about a diet. I think, yes, but then I also think the people that are not necessarily having to undergo um, a transformation and have a relatively clean diet, you know, like you said, 70 to 80%, did you just use the word clean? Not Can you clean. just fucking throw yourself yeah, out? Yeah, but I'm window? just I'm just using terminology that people would No, understand. which we should not be encouraging and should never not bring those words eating, up. Like what the fuck clean if you like antibacterial based foods then that uh, that individual is probably going to just have No, but listen to me. If your diet has always been very fucking average, you've never Mm. strived to fucking have a balanced meal or know how to build a plate of food or think about protein or think about nutrition, you just Mm. eat for the sake of eating Mm. and feeling yourself, you're not going to notice a significant difference to your health year in, year out until probably years later if your diet stays kind of the same or just goes a little bit worse but it's then, the up it's I guess the, the but what is the context of you know is that person of normal weight is that person overweight no but what i'm it, trying to say is that why would somebody strive to change something until there's a need to fucking change mm, it I that's how our society mean. works like yeah, i'm not going to do true. anything until it's fucking needed to be done and it's exactly the same true. as if your diet not a diet mm. if your diet is pretty average do you know what i mean and it's so let me ask you a question. What happens when a person wants to lose, let's say a person wants to lose like six to eight kilos, six to ten kilos, sorry, in weight, and they are, they don't really, they're a beginner with regards to their nutrition. How would you approach uh, coaching that type of individual with regards to nutrient composition, calorie composition? Just like, how would you go through that process for a person that is new to understanding the concepts and the principles of nutrition? I think there comes to a point where, like, we can cater for, like, newbies. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, a lot of our clients are completely new to things. What I mean by, like, newbies, but there has to also be an element from a client side to be willing to learn something. Because you could go and approach practically, which is like, right, Mm. okay, you've got a diet that you consume on a day-to-day basis, and you've got your favorite foods, and you've got your favorite meals. Mm. Carry on eating that, but we'll restrict your calorie intake overall. Now, you can do that approach, so it cements a habit, but it's not going to teach somebody Mm. actually what's going to help them in the Mm -hmm. long run you know Mm -hmm. and I think there comes to a point where we can't always be wrapping up people on cotton wool and saying it's okay you can just look at your calories and not think about anything else because Mm -hmm. everything else does make the fucking difference and like I would say time and time again like I totally agree with people Mm. that say that not all calories are fucking equal because they're not do you know Mm. what I mean and Mm. you know this is the thing, you know, would I strive for a client to be still eating a shit kind of diet just in calorie allowance yeah. rather than trying really hard, maybe going over the calorie limit, do you know what I mean, to try and cement some kind of actual nutritional habits because mm. you know you can take a client on and you can do that you can do a weight watchers approach just limit your points just make sure you're not having it doesn't really teach anybody about a composition of a meal you know do you know no. how many people who are like 30 40 50 that don't know how to cook still do you know what i mean they don't have any idea so encouraging the constant habit you know that they're continually doing is probably the wrong way of practically applying mm. 
your, my job to somebody because I shouldn't, you shouldn't really be encouraging that. You should be trying to teach somebody and they need to be willing yeah. to make some adjustments. Now, I think all of our clients that have ever been nutritionally planned by us will fully understand and agree with what I'm about to say. But we meal plan for clients not because I'm telling you to eat chicken and fucking quinoa and your life's miserable and everybody's on a generic food plan. Mm. I genuinely, we take everything that you love and we make it possible for you to eat, do you know what I mean? With the most nutritional mm. logic, you mm. know? And so our clients still eat a nutrient dense diet where their main meals are still mm -hmm. taste great, but they're getting the right amount of protein. They're not overdoing it on certain elements of macronutrients. They're making sure they're getting those micronutrients in. Maybe they struggle with getting vegetables in. That's a good, you know, we maybe cater to hiding them in something, you know, but we still give them dessert. We still mm. give them their caramel mm. latte, their fucking, I want a Kit Kat. I want a Kinder Bueno. I want, I want, you know, because if you don't, mm. do you know what I mean? Good luck because that's just not normal eating you know me exactly. and mark on a weekend could annihilate a cake if we wanted to you know depending on the goals like we're not perfect fuck i used to be morbidly obese yeah. i f i fight with it on a day-to-day -day basis of being like why am i not genetically yeah. <laughs> like, you know but you know like mark always says you've got to suck sometimes you've got to literally feel like shit mm. to get where you want to be and it's true like you know you've got to actually realize you know there has to be some hard work so if you're you've got a client that comes and it's a newbie you've got to encourage good habits you what know what is the difference between the difference between the results between client a who adheres to a calorie deficit and eats a nutrient dense diet and then calorie mm. uh, client b who adheres to a certain calorie amount sporadically but yeah let's let's assume that the adherence to the overall calorie target is the same but this person's diet is not as nutritious probably higher very high in fat very high in carbohydrate very low in in protein what is the what are the changes what are the results in terms of client a versus client b there's there is there is a huge difference, you know? And I think people actually need to understand this a little bit more. You can go into the gym like fucking five times a week and do the most structured progressive training program, tick all the boxes. And if your nutrition does not match, your results are not going to either. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that enough because I think so many people think, well, if I go to the gym and carry on pushing myself, if you, you know, we've had clients and we've navigated this situation with a lot of clients where they're constantly striving for more, do you know what I mean, in their gym. They want, they want to progress their weights. They want to lift more. They want to feel strong, but they can't. And the one limiting factor, their nutrition. You know, mm. it's not the fact that they are not strong enough or capable. They're just not fueled in the right way yeah. to do so. And so I always say to people, if you're that adamant, you want to keep on progressing, then please tailor to your nutrition because it's exactly. going to make such a big difference. Mm. When you know your take, your nutrition is tailored, you wake up, you feel energized. You might be hungry, but then you eat. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. not exactly like you need to starve yourself. Mm. You know, you feel fueled for your training sessions. You can see visible definition coming through. You can see muscle, lean muscle. You know what I mean? Mm. If you lose weight, like like the ways that maybe Slimming World, Weight Watchers, all of those ways did it, where it was just solely focusing on your calorie intake. Okay, people might go to the gym. You you end up like, you know, the reason people mm. can't maintain these diets mm. is because there is no muscle built in them at yeah. all. And that is why it's a saving grace for everybody to literally do their best at building muscle. If you mm. want to have the most flexible mm. and enjoyable approach to self-care, mm. you have to, like think about okay it's not just how much i eat it's what i'm fucking eating mm -hmm. and i'm sorry to say this if you're going to the gym you feel you've got no energy you can't be asked you're living on caffeine to just try and like boost you up you know mm. you need to look at what is going in your mouth on a day-to-day -day basis that is your energy you know what i mean so i always mm. say to people it's your energy if you didn't have it you'd be like a dead duracell bunny do you know exactly, what i mean yeah. and so when you put that energy in you it's like what do you want from that energy do you want to like shoot up and just have processed food digest super fucking quickly and have like no energy after to be starving? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to be going, right, okay, well, if I make a balanced diet here and balance, you know, nu my nutrition out mm -hmm. with this meal, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to feel like I've got energy to go into the gym mm -hmm. or I've got energy to go on my laptop and do some work or to 
go on a call and I don't feel lethargic in the afternoon and I've got you know when you have a shit diet you're not going to be able to get your fucking steps in you're not going to be able to wake have good quality sleep you know what I mean it's it's all these things that all come down to what you fucking eat on a day-to-day basis and you can't ignore it what you put in is just like if you went into the garage for example to fill your car up and you Mm. drove a diesel and you filled up with petrol what would happen You'd call, you'd break you could, the yeah, exactly. You'd break the fucking engine. It's the same approach, you know. If you consistently fuel yourself with the mm. wrong nutrition, or it's not even nutrition, the wrong energy. So my question, I, we're going to go for a little bit of a tangent. What is driving the uh, obesity epidemic, the rise in excess deaths, the rise in cancer diagnosis in the UK with regards to the way people are consuming their nutrition and their lifestyle. What do you want me to answer in the sense of like what it's like? What? Yeah, what? I would say let, let's stay on topic with regards to like nutritionally. Where do you think society is going wrong with regards to their their habits, their choices, their I think there's a couple of things. I think it's become socially acceptable to be overweight. Okay. there we go point one as i've always said no matter what like schools i was around i was one of those people that went to private schools but wanted to hang out with non-private school people and yeah. like the reality is is in those non-private schools sometimes you have people that are on lower economic you know socioeconomic families mm-hmm. of some degree but i was never around fat people okay. ever yeah and I'm not that old, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like it's just changed and I'm talking like I'm 50 years old going mm. backwards in 25 years ago, mm. you know? So I think, number one, it's become socially acceptable. All of our leaders, all of our, forget the fitness industry, I'm talking mm. in the world, what you see on a day is majority of our leaders, majority of our government, majority of the people that dictate these things or put you into things are overweight, do you know mm. what I mean? So there's an image there which is, I guess you could also look back in history at how much the weight had to do with uh, money and financial wealth. Yeah. And, you know, as long as they were driving the Porsche or had the fucking bag of shillings handing out to the peasants. Do you know what I mean, mm-hmm. the reality mm-hmm. is, is if you were fat, it was great, you know, and in still some countries, mm-hmm. it is more prosperous mm-hmm. being overweight. Mm-hmm. And I think it's come to a point where there's food availability at mm-hmm. every ne- means and people are fucking lazy. I'm sorry. We've got so much on our part, like our plate at the mm. moment. We do. As life goes, we have, maybe you've got kids. I don't have that, but I've worked with enough people to like vaguely understand and know, mm. maybe not the feeling, but to see it from the mm-hmm. outside. You know, you've got kids to look after. They're all growing up in a world which you never grew up in. You know what I mean? They're yeah. growing up in a tech world fueled with different things that you yeah. will not understand, you yeah. know? You've got that growing up. So you've got to manage that. You know what I mean? You've then got your job that you want to be able to progress. And maybe you've mm. got financial strains or stresses or you want to progress in financially. Mm. You've mm. got all of the, you know, family situations. We've just had a fucking pandemic. People lost jobs. They changed careers. They haven't... And mm. the reality is, is we've made also on top of that, we've wrap people up in cotton wool we've told them it's okay to be like that there's plenty of people influencing that manner Mm -hmm. and until it gets to the point where somebody's like i've just been diagnosed with something Mm -hmm. nobody feels the need to do it but then take yourself to somewhere like australia and we know this because we work with australians Mm -hmm. and the same with markets which are more prominent in being maybe not as dressed all the time you know australia the sun shines more than it will ever in the Mm -hmm. uk Mm -hmm. and gives people a reason to be more conscious outdoors with their, you know, with their activity. Now, I can't speak the same for places like South Africa because I think there's a, there is a race divide there yeah, in the yeah, sense of very, like culturally, yeah, but huge, huge same difference. kind of applies. Like the, the, the privileged of South Africa would always be outdoors with school. They'd be playing sports. They'd be mm, doing all of this. Mm, They're brought mm, up to mm, be mm. like that. Mm-hmm. In the UK, it's the absolute opposite. And, you know, I'm sorry to say this also, you've got smug cunts everywhere, everywhere. People think they're experts when they're not, you know what I mean? And that is fueled this whole thing where, as I said to you, when we were mm. talking about Tim Spector's thing and like the oh, whole blood glucose go, and all of that, let's not go back onto that. Trigger warning. <laughs> But like I said about the Tim Spe- you know, mm. we both said, mm. it, it it really starts to build a wall in between somebody actually yeah. getting somewhere or actually or, or over analyzing themselves to the point where 
I saw a news article because uh, loads of people, obviously, he's going on a PR run and has paid a whole bunch of journalists to do the Zoe app and all that kind of stuff just to just to get your foot in the door and go through the entire process. It's going to set you back at least 600 quid, which a lot of people that I'm sorry, but a lot of people don't have that type of money lying around for a super generic I, but also, um, I don't give a fuck about how much money somebody has. At the end of the day, there's people that will spend money depending yeah, on their value. Yeah, but you're spending 600 quid for them to tell you that you need to stop eating because their general recommendations are for you to go vegan. They're like all meat. Okay, can we not stop talking you. about it? Because it just no, I'm just they, saying. I just, I'm I just fucking, saying. So that you pay, you, all you've done, down. all you've done is paid six hundred pounds for them to tell you to just eat more vegetables. Well, like my mum was saying to me the other day, she was like, um, I don't, I can't. We were talking about something, and she, she's like, I don't understand why somebody would hire somebody for them to injure them or to do that. I said, but somebody doesn't know when they're fucking paying. They've been sold into it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, if somebody comes on a concert with us and we were a bunch of fads, do you know what I mean? Do you think I'd be going? This is a complete fad to be quite mm, honest with you I think you're going to mm, end up annihilated yeah, right. in yeah. four weeks time you're going to have a knee op on the way do you yeah, know what exactly. I mean you're going to feel like shit I'm going to put you on low calories do you mm. think they'd buy in no. No, no you'd sell the opposite you're going to feel pumped you're going to be super lean like me do you know what I mean you're going to be you know jumping around plyometrically yeah. within four weeks you know mm. so somebody doesn't know they're naive they're and they're also vulnerable the it's going to be you know they're vulnerable but under the assumption it's going to be a positive experience because why else would they buy it oh and on, the, on another <laughs> note like if somebody can just like put me i'm sure we probably know somewhere some some person in here mm. i would just love to like to train kim kardashian and to and the kardashians mm. to 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 stop there being like them being a laughing mark, like a mark, like on social media, because I cannot oh, stand you it. Know, you know how that's gonna go there, Georgia. Oh no, because Kim's you've got a new a, trainer who's a very well-known fitness American a, girl. Okay, well, um, but she's lean as fuck and stacked. You know exactly who no, I'm talking generally, about. Generally, you know, you we've not not the Kardashians, but we've dealt with socialites, important people, and when it comes to like encouraging them to do things properly you generally meet roadblocks no but i'd say like we won't be filming you training do you know what i mean if it looks like because this I've been but i'd there. also be putting you through exercises which made logical fucking sense for you to be actually capable of doing you don't put somebody on a pendulum squat yeah, for them I to then do a quarter that, rep take also, them off when you could just do them a box goblet squat and teach them to sit down onto something yeah, but you're, you know uh, but I, I i get that but then you have all these great intentions of running a structured strength and conditioning workout. You're making assumptions. And then you, you get there and then the, the, the client starts moaning and complaining. Depends on the client, depends on the value, but like, you know, those, I just, I just think overall, like I would love to just be able to completely. Or a person or value in their own, in their own head, they're, they're under the assumption that, that you're going to do what they want you to do. Oh, 100 percent, you know, and especially if there's some sort of time, I, I definitely believe that, but, I think it's just, it just, I just can't believe that people still video this to like millions well, of people. I used to video myself with Spencer Matthews doing the worst bench press technique. I used to do pull the 90% of the reps up by myself, you know, and I yeah, just did it, it to stroke, happy. exactly, to stroke his ego. And I was selfish in the sense that I wanted the recognition of training a well known person. So, I would try and encourage proper exercises, and he would do four times a week, and we do bench pressing for an hour all the time yeah but all i also think that he's just like kind of anomaly versus some and of I the used other to film ones that like and he's be like oh my god famous. you're so amazing and it was cringe yeah but mark like he's definitely not the most famous person you've worked with uh, and he was like he is and still is no matter how much Millie he's McIntosh changed side abs she's not fucking board. famous either yeah, she's only I'm famous saying, in southwest like, london you all you, all, you know you you a, a well-known, well-intentioned, not well-known, but well-intentioned trainer trying to do, trying to do something. You're like, please, can I just coach you properly? Yeah, but I feel like, Mark, I like those, this. This I don't think those are the this right assumption. Yes, because you're dealing with socialites who it's are mummies and daddies' children, you know what I mean, no, who I get, get that, everything given I'm via inheritance. You potentially run into that when you Way up get... against somebody who's like a famous singer or an actress, do you know what I mean, who's made their own pathway in life, not been on like a shit reality TV programme, sucking on the balls of your father for money, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the fucking 
talking honest truth. So their their approach is very different because they've had to work for it in a way. They've had to be worked sure. to be recognised. Yeah, no, so they don't true. fuck around in training. The ones that fuck around in training are the ones that always, they think especially in those areas, in those specific mm. areas, they think the world shines out of their arsehole. And it's just in certain roads, mm. honestly. SW6, SW10, yeah. SW5. Yeah, I used SW... to, that's why I've deleted the vast majority of it off my Instagram, because I can't, it's just embarrassing to watch. No, but then take an athlete, like a footballer, who could be very well known. They don't train like an arsehole. They don't no, do it for fucking recognition. No, they've got to do no, it because they've got to perform, fair. because they don't get paid yeah. or have no, a team okay. if yeah, they no, don't. I get that, I get that. But I guess it's Kim Kardashian is not exactly an athlete. Though, Look, I, I get it. Like, if you could get Kim Kardashian as a client, like, your whole business would be literally sorted for the rest of your fucking life, like, likely, you know? I like I, no, I, I, would, I appreciate that. I think it would be quite a stressful job, though. Absolutely. But then, like, like having to work for very, very very fucking privileged and uh, very well-known families, like Pakistani families, the royals, you know, the Saudi royals that we've all worked with. Like, it's fucking draining. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're literally their bitch. And, okay, they might be polite to you and they pay you a fuck ton of money. But the reality is, is you are there at their beckoning call. And if you want to be looking after four members of the family, you're the fucking bitch. You You do as they say, because they're paying you. I feed you now. I've got clients. No, you cancel. You come. Yeah, you come now. Do you know what I mean? Literally, you you come now. It's like okay, I'm coming right fucking now. (laughs) It's like your taxi's outside. Okay, cancel my day. (laughs) You know, literally, because they don't understand. You can never have a logical conversation with somebody like that, where you're like, Mm. I have other other people, and it's like that. No, no, there's no other people barring me. Do you know what I mean? So that kind of approach is very hard to work with. But if you get a good I can't say that every, you know, some of them have been amazing clients in the years, but, no. you know, they Very can taxing. be, it can be incredibly taxing, you know, on everything, you know, but going. Especially when they don't want to pay you because they feel entitled to Mark, train with you for free because no, what are, you're going back to the same shitty people <laughs> no. that I've just gone around in a circle I can assure you no Saudi <laughs> Royal did not pay you they no, paid no, you no, fucking pay. and some do you know what I mean We're and bought you an bankroll. iPhone on a Tuesday do you know what I mean the 50s yeah, so don't you're talking about those that yeah, get everything for free in SW five, yeah. SW ten, SW six, SW three. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Notting Hill if you're lucky. Like you know, it's like you're literally in that barrier of people. Yeah, I'm sorry. And you like you you physically stop it, Mark, because you fucking annoy me when you go on this tangent. You're not talking about like a giving a good anybody that has never had to work for something is always yeah. going to be an absolute fucking nightmare to yeah. work with. Yeah, you know that I mean? is because so true. They don't understand. That is so true. They have no understanding of how to even communicate with somebody in a working manner or in a business manner. And, no, you know, no. it's almost like your best yeah. friends and that's yeah, the way you deal with them. It was such a weird relationship with some of those people. Yeah, you we end up training, like at a family like, dinner. We were training, yeah, you end up at a family dinner with like four, like four people. Yeah, right? you're like, what the fuck? Have you got no mates? Um, people don't understand it. I guess it depends who you work with, but like with our jobs, we have genuinely been like, sometimes you're like, wow, have I actually ended up in this situation? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's almost just, surreal. It is a bit surreal sometimes. I've never worked. I we if we didn't very do all these jobs, relationships with very strange people. If we didn't do this kind of job, we would never have come across the amount of people. I feel that like we have there are quite across. a few. Like if you were like a a barber or a nail technician, you don't have a strong eyelashes. enough relationship unless you're like their personal. Yeah, you know, like people that provide those types of services always end up with weird relationships with with. Well, because like my hairdresser was like, no, like they people will tell you shit, but like it's only like once every twelve weeks. Do you know what I mean? They don't then bombard you telling you shit all the time on like WhatsApp or yeah, on Instagram. People will or... come and tell you shit that they haven't told their husbands or wives or friends, or they tell you shit. And you're like, excuse me, what did you just say? At first, you kind of weigh it up, and you're like, okay, it's because you're technically somebody that like their friends don't know, you don't you don't know necessarily mm. their outer circle, but then. We did know Why all of did their we circle, never which was go weird. To like the Sun magazine and sell juicy stories for money. Because you're not a fucking peasant, you cretin. I could have sold loads. Honestly, the way you speak about this makes me want to ship you back to Africa. No, it I'm fucking just saying, annihilates I'm me. Just like, saying, I've, I've, I've openly admitted to shoplift plastic bags, okay? Like, I'm a really, that's a conscious I could thing have that sold I'm aware some of. juicy stories to the Sun. 
that I've taken to my grave. Okay, Mark. Well, whilst they find the photo of you topless on the internet, I mean, I'm sure they'd find some juicy stories on how much juice you used to take. So (laughs) the reality is, I think it's best that with people that are confidential, there's no problem. But I think the people where you've got like a deal where they think that their influence at certain points outweighs your job. (laughs) Yeah, definitely outweighs. But no, I think, you know, going back to what you asked regarding like how... What was the last question you asked about? About why is well, why is it that it seems that the British population, in terms of their nutritional choices and lifestyle, nutritionally, why is it having? Why is there such a, a erosion of public health? Oh yeah, that was the last when, one. When it wasn't comes it? Yeah. to with regards to the nutritional choices of the UK, because I just think that like the new. <sighs> Like people would probably like I I've always been of the approach where like when it, whatever food we put out is like kind of realistic like it's actually realistic. It's a bit gl- like but I know I'm going to interrupt you, but it's almost a bit gluttonous to a, to a certain what? degree. What me? No, not you. I'm, I'm just, just talking saying, about our recipes. Like, whenever you and and I appreciate this is minimal context, but like whenever you people eat and drink like it is probably you know the Last Supper. Like, for example, like you would go and have, like, maybe, like, after work, you'd go and have, like, a glass of wine, a cheese board, and you just literally annihilated, like, a thousand calories. You're not even really aware. Mm. And the reality is, being a fat person, I used to annihilate food, like, no tomorrow. Talk us through your, your average day. My, what, what I ate in a day. Yeah. Here we go. Go and get influenced and go and eat the same. No, I'm yeah. joking. Um, do you know, I, I mean, obviously, I had all the fads. Like, I had like fat burners, like apple cider vinegar. Like, I always had used to have heartburn. No, um, I'm what, <laughs> what food did you eat on a daily basis? Well, that obviously ranged like from what the day was, but I always yeah. had shit tons of chocolate. That was always like loads of snacks, chocolate. Chocolate was just the thing, like bars and but bars like, of work. chocolate. At work, at home. Mark, I got, like, I used chocolate. to binge eat. At home, and then hide all the wrappers in my bedroom. I've told this story, no, like no, when yeah, my mum literally <laughs> found, like, because I used to have a secret part under the floor in my room, yeah. and I she literally found like three. I think it was like three black bin liners of wrappers, like three black bin liners of wrappers. That's like what hectic. chocolates are we talking about? Galaxy. <laughs> I remember it because it was Londis. Used to walk past the Londis, mm. and I used to go in. I used to have like maybe a fiver. Probably okay. stole that from my dad or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's not... <laughs> borrowed. Borrowed. Long-term Bo- borrowing is, <laughs> Long term. is the term we like to use. Oh, my parents were just, oh, God, and lost case. Anyway, although actually having grown up, I've actually met quite a few people that used to do the same thing. So, like, I kind of feel like okay I f- about I feel it. Like as a <laughs> well, child, not really, but... especially if you're the last born, if you don't walk past your parents' bedside table and, and help spend yourself all their to something, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You didn't, you know didn't have know? credit cards as involved by that. no. That's the problem. No, we don't have credit cards. Um, no, but the problem is I've always wanted more. That's the whole thing. I've always wanted more. I'm one of those, like... And so I think that's a problem with a child. So, like, it not only did it replicate in, like, my get, food... You definitely get that from your mother. Your mother's Oh, my mum would um, be, like... My mum's never done shit like that. She would have been busy. beaten to a pulp if she She's did. busy. My mum's busy. <laughs> she goes from one project to the next. Like, it's... But project meaning, like, not only, like... Just yeah. Yeah, it's not. I'm not saying she wants more, but she's very like project orientated, and it's very like one project, next project, next project, next project, next. But project, I say my dad's project. got like weird tendencies of this as well, like in a weird way. So he cha- he can change things a lot. My dad, like he yeah. can. Yeah, your dad's not scared of a challenge. You know? No, so I feel like maybe then the combination of the two fucking genetics yeah, has made me, which yeah. is great, you know, somebody that overthinks literally 45 times a day. Um, but no, I think, you know, in the sense of what I used to actually eat, like I'd say chocolate and then obviously takeaways, like I'd oh, still eat everything kind of that like my mum used to give about? me or that I would make myself, but then I'd just eat shit on top, like a lot of Chinese food. Chinese takeaways? No, never Chinese. Never. Dominoes. Dominoes. <sighs> To be fair, we didn't have access. We had the local Chinese, the local Indian. Did they deliver? Or did you Domino's was the fetch, only one that delivered because the other ones needed a car. You have to go and fetch it. Yeah, and that obviously didn't have time for that shit. Do you know what I mean? So like, oh, Domino's was the only one that delivered. Uh, we used to do chi- one takeaway a week, Chinese, on a Saturday. And then obviously because like Pretentious 101, like when we were like 17, we all got given cars for our birthdays because like, you know... That's what you do. When God forbid seven... your child could not have a car. 
Oh, yeah, because they'd be a, right in that situation. A that'd be so sad if you didn't have a driving license at school. And then it was just like McDonald's drive through I don't even like McDonald's that much. I love McDonald's Diet mm. Coke. And I love like a chicken nugget occasionally and some fries. But I just know I'm going to be so hungry in the next like... So I'd use my calories for it. Mm. Like I'd use half my daily calorie, but then I'd just be really sad that I'm hungry. Mm. Although we did try the Biscoff McFlurry the other day and that was... It was delicious. That was like our ice cream treat. That was... That was... That was unbelievable. That tops... How many tops, calories was that? that? 340. Yeah, it's not that bad. But that, you know, that's on par with your, your you know, your artisan gelato. No, that's such a big statement. We've got a really no. good ice cream shop down the road. It's, it's becoming a bit of a problem. No, it's good. But I'm just saying, like, you know, close your eyes. Close you know. your eyes. You, you, I just the wish they put more toppings in a McFlurry. They're a bit peasanty with it, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, it's proper inflation. Like in America, obviously, supersized me. Do you know what I mean? They like literally like sprinkle like half the fucking jar of like yeah. shit in there. Like, in oh, fact, no, they could have doubled the 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 concentration of McFlurry. No, the what do we have Biscoff. They could have added. I think double the uh, the the. I just appreciate a bit more Biscoff sauce, like spread, like kind of like melted sauce. Just a little bit more yeah, sauce would have been good. Yeah, the crumbs good. were quite nice, but like I mean in the middle, like make I want to sure. try the chocolate pie, but apparently it's underwhelming. But I don't know. I do, do love you know what's desserts, overwhelming fuck. is paying for two Starbucks coffee and being ten pounds. <laughs> oh that God, is, you're so painful to listen to, that honestly. Is that is okay, like nine pounds eighty for two coffees, but literally yeah, like ice and water, <laughs> like that. That is. But Starbucks has always been degree. expensive. I think also if you're doing a drive-through, obviously there's a premium element to it, isn't there? It's convenient, so yeah, they add on sure, like sure. money on top, don't we they? We never had drive-throughs in Zimbabwe. You didn't even have like a. We had Nando's. That was about it. For sadza, do you know what I mean? Nanza sadza with like kidneys. Yama. Yeah. Kidneys and fucking. Mariwo. Okay, well, whatever you're saying, nobody understands. So, like, well, we have listeners in Zimbabwe. Do we? Oh, we One do because I've looked at the stats. But yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, no, a clients of us in Zimbabwe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, true. But I think going back to the fact what we said about McDonald's in the sense of like how it would make me feel if I ate it. It's like it's not like it's a bad thing. Like if you had it like once, like once in a while. But it's just the is satiety that... of it. Yeah, satiety. Of I it. would just love to feel full for like four hours. Five hours. I'm not Some people that. hate the feeling of being full, though. But I just feel like you're not filling yourself up with the right things, I'm, if that's the case. I'm the same hunger levels as I was prior to eating, 30 minutes after eating. And you've just had a burger, fries, and a drink, and I'm good to... I'm ready to go. It's not that many calories, later. though, depending on, like, what exactly you eat. It's not that many no, calories. It'd no. probably work out at, like, 700, 800, no. maybe, at most. I do like, like, not six chicken nuggets, like, 12 would be good. 20 pack they are so delicious I love and even when I watched Jamie Oliver do that blitzed up chicken I thought still I love I love chicken nuggets I mean and it was so funny when he made those chicken nuggets and he handed it to the children he said which one would you like the like the goujon or the nugget and they all went for the fucking nugget even though they'd watched like a bird be blitzed up in a blender yeah the coca cola is on a different level though he's actually talking about that driving 20 minutes just to get a diet coke from McDonald's like the because we obviously went on to a bit of a topic about aspartame and like again like are you you are what you eat because it will fuel you like on a day-to-day basis to how you action not only your like mental thoughts or processing mm. how mm. you converse but also how you feel it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have days where it's off do you know what I mean when we when we say over this we're kind of talking like an 80 percent consistency really yeah like allowing 20 percent leeway sometimes 30 percent leeway yeah. for just fun do you know what I mean I or just you, not you, overthinking you looked it. at it like statistically 365 days of the year if you're you know if your overall adherence to certain things outweighs your um, you know, you going off track or whatever you, however you want to frame it, you know, depending if you don't absolutely go, you know, off track into the bushes and you, yeah. you come back every once in a while, then, you know, statistically you're always going to be better off than, you know, the, I think everybody kind of assumes that we're, especially when clients come on board, that we are, the, the expectance is 100% adherence robotic application which 
again is it's never it's it just frames the wrong expectations and perceptions for people yeah okay i'm actually gonna have a little bit of like a back chat on that okay go, I'll go for it. i appreciate if you looked over a 365 day element that if you were consistent x amount of days a year then you're still consistent overall you know what i mean even if you had those days off however yeah it's that excuse time and time again that you are unable to stick to something for a long period of time. Now, mm. when what we are talking about today is not directly related to fat loss, and yeah. this is the problem when it comes to people's nutrition or diet, is they automatically link nutrition to fat loss or yeah, weight loss. loss yeah. And what we're talking about today is actually your nutrition on a day-to-day -day basis. You will go through or might need to go through or are going through a mm. fat loss phase. Can you always be losing fat? No, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. what I always say to people is that we're coming on board to tailor your nutrition to your day-to-day -day lifestyle. The only thing that changes when you want to mm. lose fat is just the amount, do you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah, maybe just very, adjustments. Yeah, that's a very important thing to say. So when like people come no out, it's, not, it's not fat, like... The, yeah, like fat loss, losing weight, but then once you've achieved that goal, like how do you maintain that? How do you then, you know, build on what you've done? And it's like there's no, there's no difference between the two diets. Like Georgia said, the only difference is the amount. The amount. And this is where people go so wrong, like on, on and on off. Like, okay, well, when I'm on it, do you know what when I mean? I, I'm going to yeah, eat exactly. this. And then when yeah, I'm off exactly. it, I'm going to fucking yeah. annihilate myself. Yeah, exactly. And the reality is, is what we're trying to say exactly. is it's every day what you're eating. The only thing that changes is a slight adaption on the numbers. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Because, okay, there are tools to make fat loss slightly easier, which is obviously satiety, like looking at your sati mm. satiation of food, mm. looking at your protein intake. But that's all numbers, technically. That's mm. not necessarily... Like, if you looked at, okay, you're going to have a burger and chips to somebody that was on maintenance, mm. they would probably have the burger, the bun, some homemade chips and a side salad. And you've got somebody that's on a fat loss diet that's probably got a burger and a bun and a side salad, just not the chips. You know what I mean? Mm. Or mm. they've got just the burger, the chips and the salad with no bun. That's a deduction of maybe 150 to 200 calories mm -hmm. that takes them into a deficit on that day. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of very small minor changes yeah that a fat loss phase brings in exactly. but it's it not, doesn't it's annihilate not like oh, i need to eat a salad and i need to eat you yeah know, all this you don't actually change yeah. the food that you really enjoy exactly. eating you just adapt or you could you know potentially like instead of eating a chicken thigh or something that has a fattier cut of meat you could eat still the same thing with just a slight a smaller yeah, these are, these are, slight variation no you'll probably to, go okay well if you want to get the maximum amount for your calories do you know what i mean and you want to like really enjoy it mm. then swap the chicken thigh for the chicken breast but don't say mm. that chicken thigh is bad it's just going to no, entail some bad. more energy going in exactly. so if you want to get the more protein and the thing yeah. then you go for the chicken breast yeah. but and i i, I can't i can't agree with you more on that especially with when people are thinking i am on a diet that it then needs to change to something that is so far removed from your day-to-day -day, uh, yeah choices. like how do you see that you, like just ask yourself how to... do you see doing that without imagine if you had a coach yeah. that brings you on to a very i don't want to call them a coach just call them like a cretin okay that brings you on to and then puts you in a really low calorie diet but tells you to only eat certain foods okay yeah if you actually speak to yourself okay it's not fucking abnormal to do this and go can I, without the coach being there, without the trainer, the cretin being there, yeah. do you know what I mean? Can I eat this, do you know what I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis? I, I guess some people are just really con uh, more concerned on the result, though, do you know what I mean? So, like, they've bought into the individual looking a certain way or a certain message, and they believe, I just want the result. I can do this. I'm going to deal with the consequences once I've achieved X result. Uh, I yeah I, I get that but like nobody ever gets close to achieving X result in the wrong strategy. They might get four weeks yeah. in, but they're not going to get any well, closer. There are, there are a lot of coaches that we have seen on social media that we know of, uh, openly will put a client on eight hundred calorie diet just to get the before and after. 
Yeah, I totally appreciate that. But like, I also think there's an element with like our industry and and exactly bringing up the rise of like, why do you think it's so bad at the moment? I mean, it's like, there's just, we have so much availability for short form context. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, So not just content, context to things. It's all short form because we're all too lazy or unstimulated to focus for anything Mm. more than a few seconds on something, okay? Now, unless you're paid to focus on something, you just don't focus on it. Mm. So the reality is, is that we are only seeing a small context of somebody, you know? So you might see an influencer put on social media, best exercises to grow your glutes. Now, okay, there are the best exercises to grow your glutes, but what you don't know about that context is what else you also need to do to also grow your glutes. You know what I mean? Mm. You're seeing a snapshot of context. Mm. And we've got that in billions of forms and formats yeah. now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So all we see is small form content and we're taking and making assumptions based off of no practical, well-rounded answer. It's all I just agree. bits, do you know what I mean? I bitty, I sporadic, bitty. bitty. It's like a surprise, do you know what I mean? And, and okay, it's not our responsibility on everything that we put out that we've always got to put the full context, mm. but it is in a weird way because if you want people to be... Some I don't think a lot of influencers, I'll be honest with you, like actually understand how much influence they have over people. Like I'm sometimes astounded about how much influence I have over some people. That amazes me. I'm like, what? Like I can't like it's, yeah, I just especially don't even... all the people in the gym. Because oh, everybody God. follows what George does, they all watch her and then they just mimic her. Like the men are just Simon mother. says, like Simon, Georgia goes, Simon says, rub your head, and everyone's just, just fucking there, rubbing their fucking head. That's... No, I turned around today, and like I always do, like it's I've a got very a super... fascinating social experiment watching it from uh, from afar. Watching what? Well, I watch people watching you which I think is quite interesting because like the dynamics of Georgia walking into the gym. So like for, for example, two, two teenage boys today, one <laughs> must've been 16. One must've been about 14. 14 or no, 18. Mark. You yeah, just don't know. Well, around, they yeah. were probably, oh, they, they probably were, over the age of 18. Uh, yeah. And they were, you know, they were just teenage boys going through puberty, not very strong, not very muscular, you know, just your average teenage child gangly pimples. Teenager. They probably were 18. They don't even allow people. So doing a, they were doing incline chest press. Georgia then comes in, grabs a set of dumbbells that are like double what they're doing and, you know, starts doing her exercise and both of them basically stop what they're doing and are just watching her with like their mouths like on the floor. No, I think you'll find it was and actually to do like, the leg press. Because well, like, then they what just... is this chick up to? And then Georgia starts doing single leg calf rises. Then they go from chest to single leg I calf I turn rises. around and there's three men behind me all, all doing single leg calf rises. Yeah, everyone's just watching you. And like <laughs> the one dude was even legitimately like no, no scum whatsoever. It was just filming Georgia. Just whipped his phone out and just started recording her doing her. Who work on. I just don't even know what they even they like. What do they? It's either one, two things. There's either one, he's like, gonna I'm going to use this because it's two, a super set of two really good exercises, or I'm going to save this for the spank bank and spank bank wank bank. <laughs> yeah, spank bank. Spank bank. Yeah. Do you spank out of your spank dick or do you have dick. a wank? No, you spank your dick. No, okay, I think you were wrong there, and now you're trying to find some kind of slogan with no, spank it's your dick. No, called a spank bank. It's not called a wank bank. It's called a spank bank. Google it. Google it. Oh, no, Mark Google Garlic. It. Google it. Absolutely not. In the UK, Google it is it. called well, a wank listen, bank. I'm sorry you've got this colonial view on the world <laughs> where the fucking the UK is the centre of the universe. Wank bank is on Pornhub. I've just typed it in. Yeah, spank, spank bank. Yeah, you're going to find There's it, yeah. nothing on spank bank, Mark. Even Urban Dictionary's got nothing on it. Do you know what I mean? There is no such thing as a spank bank. There's a spank bank. No, Mark. Who whacks themselves unless you're a little bit psychotic? That guy we we watched on Olivia Atwood's program. Oh my God, I so advise people to watch that. She was like, punch yourself in the balls and the dude was just whacking himself. Mark, we actually watched, so you have to watch this on ITV and I absolutely, okay, I am not a reality TV. I've worked with two, I just just think they're all a bunch of bellends, but I really, because she's kind of a bit foul-mouthed, 
loved and also quite proper in a weird way. I think Olivia Atwood is absolutely hilarious. And I think she does things that most people probably wouldn't do. But she's obviously done an ITV programme about getting filthy rich. So all about the sex industry. Mm. And like this just fascinates us because we love watching shit like this. Mm. Like mm. not porn. Like we just love watching other people do like... Just live, it kind of gives you just the fact that you're fucking boring. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. literally, you're like, okay, yeah. it's okay, I'm boring. Um, kind and of makes was... you want to have a fetish. No, what about the girl who puts this guy, go- oh my God, okay. So Olivia was sat there watching it. Fuck, it was oh, weird. Yeah. He comes yeah, in, yeah. he gets put into a latex head, like a, mm. PV- a head. So, mm. like, it's like you can't, like a dominatrix mm. kind of vibe head, mm. okay? Mm. A pair of women's pants, fake mm, tits, mm. okay? Um, a, a thing pulled through his head, like a, a wig thing yeah, that he like she wig. pulls again. Yeah. Okay, and he's in this full, like, dummy costume. Mm. Oh, no, let's not forget, what does he have put up his asshole a the whole plug. time? A butt plug, a stainless steel butt mm. plug, okay? Mm. And he's meant to hold it in there the whole mm. time that mm. she abuses and then him. she put him in a cage. She put him in a cage. I was honestly watching this going, yeah. this I guy was, I was like... Why did... Because Olivia asked him, why do you do this? He said, I'm a very high-powered CEO that runs a company where I tell people what to do and I like relinquishing my power and choice and I like being told what to do. That's just... I get it. It's probably a Tory MP. <laughs> what, sending 35 grand for yeah, fucking... Yeah, probably, that's a BBC he's probably, presenter. He's probably a Tory MP. There's a lot of like, money going flying around the David BBC Cameron. right now. It was David Cameron. David Cameron. No, don't. David Cameron was only the only one that I think, even though he might have been up to no good. No, like, did, I liked um, him as a prime was, minister. I just, I would like to, I would like to have a fetish like that because once you've, once you're completing, <laughs> once you are like getting the fetish completed, it must be such a... Well, Mark, such an experience we went to spin the other day and yeah. we came back at the car it spins at 7 15 so early morning okay and we're in yeah. the petrol station filling up the car and this girl gets out the car okay oh, and she's got latex. i'm not joking no mark she let's describe the legs the bondage yeah, legs she had, she had rubber legs. like kind of like a pork in a no it was rind, like, like when, but black rubber around her yeah, legs but so tight it looked like when people tie you know shit around their arms to inject so them every every each leg not every leg each leg had black rubber like literally around it not full leg it was like skin rubber skin yeah. rubber like a pork wrapped for like yeah. roasting yeah, yeah. and she was wearing a latex dress on top yeah. like and she latex. was going to get an energy drink and i said to mark She's just about to go and make two grand. She's going to go and piss on somebody. She's going to go and piss on somebody She's or like, tell them to, to like, it. fuck off and their cock's tiny. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Your cock's hilarious. The fact that you can make money yeah. laughing at men's dicks, like, makes me actually... Yeah. The fact that men want that and they actually, like, punch yourself like and a man will punch yeah, himself. I would like to be experience that, though. Because you I've want just, to experience that. Yeah, because I feel like if you've got a fetish like that, the desire to, to fulfill it is so strong that when you actually fulfill it, it must be so uh, relieving and enjoyable. Okay, I kind of, I'm, I kind of understand of the escort situation. But I feel like attractive it, girl or not attractive, whatever you like. You know no, what I mean? I'm Give you sex. And... I'm talking about like having. A but weird, why do you like... want to experience that, Mark? I'm slightly because concerned. I feel like it, it because it, it. I feel like it's such a strong desire for you to. Because if you think about like a fetish, there's so many rich and powerful influential people that have weird fetishes that they will literally sacrifice their reputation and everything around them to fulfill those fetishes so you would assume that the desire to do that is so high that you're willing to risk it all but when you get it when you're in the process of satisfying that itch it must be and like an but, but you're always talking about the powerful people but a lot of these people on the program they don't necessarily work what? with like tons of loaded people no but i'm just they saying, work with I'm, people if you've got a what's weird... more abnormal is knowing that your work colleague gets pissed on for a golden shower like, that's yeah, worse that's would be not... the sa- i would imagine it would be the same as like doing heroin and then <laughs> feeling like the euphoric feeling yes it's that. a rush it's a and rush of adrenaline chasing you know, the fix, chasing, you know, chasing the, you know, trying to get that feeling of, like, relief. 
Well, you know, there's a lot of people that do things and I, it's not always necessarily a fetish. Those ones are fetishes, you know. Yeah, I feel like fetishes are going to be like, have a stronger desire slash, you know, emotional attachment to it than just like normal Sex, sex, like an yeah, escort, yeah. an escort, yeah. But you know, a fetish yeah. can run on mo- multiple different ways. I'm just fascinated that like people genuinely want to be pissed on on their face. I just don't understand. Yeah, that's that. weird. That's really weird. But but also just but like the thing is is like, do you like getting pissed on just by women, or do you like getting pissed on in general? Because no, it would just be I women because they'd I look up to imagine, see the flaps, wouldn't they? I can't imagine doing a hot dirty piss on a guy and him enjoying that why don't you just instead of referencing a guy why don't you reference pissing on me do you know what I mean why does it have to be you pissing on a guy because I don't think women want to get pissed on right I I would say if you had a hundred people that like to be pissed on 95% of them are going to be men and there's going to be one weird woman because men have no concept of personal hygiene some of them and sometimes you yeah, don't either, to be quite honest with you. I, I, like, I just look at, I think, you know, I have numerous women, female clients that say to me, like, they just don't understand. The husband's got the availability to look after themselves and they just fucking don't. Their personal, you know, and they're just like, I don't understand. Mm. But like, not some men are so anal on what they look like, how preened yeah. they are. And for anything, like my sister used to live with this guy who was actually made in Chelsea. Yeah. They used to put foundation on his face. Yeah, <laughs> the bathroom yeah. was just orange stains of like yeah. foundation and fake tan all over the place. Mm. Um, and he used to like spend like literally three hours in the bathroom, like mm. getting ready. And I think mm. that's abnormal. Mm. But I, I do think men do like men are kind of disgusting. Like on average, a man will probably bite their nails more like fart, like, piss on things like not wash yeah. not brush their teeth yeah. like not put deodorant on not think about Generally, showering yeah. frequently yeah. not change their bed sheets exactly. have holes in their boxes mm-hmm. i mean do you want me to carry on because i could literally be here for another hour like there's so many problems yeah now women on the other hand mm-hmm. if you've got hair as a woman mm-hmm. i'm talking about this as the client mm-hmm. like body hair on women mm-hmm. it is a bit st- I find it a bit strange, those women that avidly just keep all of the body hair on their body. The armpits especially. Mm. Like, I find, like, if you had a crawling bikini line, mm. I think you'd need a fetish to want to go and down on that. You, you know, to be a rug muncher, do you know what I mean? You'd really be r- rug Some munching. Some dudes love it, though, <laughs> because remember back in the day, the very, you know, the first inception of, uh, porn and pornographic uh, content all the women had hairy vaginas yes but do you not think they were slightly preened hairy vaginas no, they were all in different were shapes bushes. okay that's a little bit of a fact but that yes i appreciate like please stop saying bush honestly we've done this before we've had this conversation yeah. about bushes and not but i do find the sort of like that's I, why when we were growing up as 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 young teenage boys when you used to go down on a girl you used to call it mangoing because you used to pick the hair off your teeth I actually, like, I'm going to throw up that you just... Okay, I don't think you lost your virginity until you were, like, fucking 18. So don't yeah, even pipe true. up, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, because you were fucking rug munching, mango fucking picking. No, Daniel, that's was. Okay, that's disgusting. It's actually disgusting. It's yeah. actually disgusting. I've now got horrible images. What? Horrible images in my head. What, picking hair out your teeth? You but don't like hair, though. I fucking hate hair, and that is revolting. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Well, you know when you eat a mango but, sometimes, and it, you get it, the mango strands stuck in your teeth? that you Not to if you spend on. £6.80 on the M&S fucking BP garage where it's rock hard and there's no fibre in it. Yeah, like, literally. <laughs> but that's just fucking disgusting. Mm. Like, that's just... I'm not the one who came up with it. I'm just But you clearly you, remember it. I remember all the... Uh, I always say this to you, like, oh, God, need to eat, need to wax, whatever, and you literally say the words, I'll pick the hair out of my teeth, and I literally mm-hmm. just violently throw up in my mouth. Like, it's so gross. Like, yeah, but yeah, it, I know your mother listens to us, but I do love your vagina. Oh, though. my God, please stop. The fact you put that in the same sentence, just forget my mum listens to this, just don't mention her name in okay, the same sentence as my yeah, vagina. Like she doesn't listen to it. Okay, we, let's change topics. <laughs> How much I love my wife. No, honestly, I want to throw up. Just stop it, honestly. You've just called them beef flaps not a lo- not so long ago. I didn't say yours were beef curtains. Well, but then I'm who else saying... of these curtains have you experienced? I'm just saying that, the, you know... You've got all ranges of colours. come in different shapes and sizes. 
It's just like penises are different shapes. But they shouldn't be called flaps because flap means they flap in the wind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't have flaps. Okay, no, you don't have <laughs> flaps. Honest. You have. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I can't, trying I can't so hard. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, you know, just without offending. Because I guess a curtain could also be construed to be loose and dangly. Depends if it's a, like one of those Velux curtains, strong, mm. structured, pull straight down, open mm. and close, maybe. But no, I do find the fact the flaps, it just it puts into the thing that I've had like six yeah. children. Everything's just in. going round in a big old circle. We're going back to, you know, hairy arms and... No, we're not. bottoms and... No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Look at all the shoes. They all look like dad shoes now. Everyone's... What are all you All the talk- fashion, it's all weird, like, all weird stuff that looks like everyone's got a pair of, uh, like, new balance. I'm about to, back. I'm, trust me, well, don't put it past me, I'm about to go and buy a pair of Hermes fucking sandals, watch me, and I'm going to be trotting around in them, do you know what I mean? Well, I'm not going to be trotting anywhere with no visa, so. Oh, yeah. God, were you going to St. Lucia? I wouldn't be too fucking upset about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, honestly. Oh, woe is me. I'm going to St. Lucia for fucking end of November. I don't think I'll survive this year. To be fair, like, we haven't been away in ages. Also, I think it's a complete fucking nightmare. Never get three pets. I love them to pieces, but... Yeah, pets are... uh, But the responsibility of having two dogs and a cat, just trying to get care for them. Like, you've always got to be conscious about what time you come home. You just can't ever... It's always restricted. And we were were perfect with one dog. Yeah, but we also had my parents that were always very happy to... Okay, Mark, they did it a couple of times, do you know what I mean? That's not Yeah, but you could just dump them at, 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 at... my no, parents. I don't think it was that easy. We always had one dog then. Yeah, that's And true. the cat was in the category. The, the problem is, is that we've got like the most perfect first child, which is obviously the cat came first. He's amazing. Gentleman yeah. Kitty. And then we've got Cardi, who was just the most perfect Boston yeah, Terrier. So well behaved. Like just, we used to take her to hotels. She used to sit at dinner tables with us, like yeah, on the chair. Was well she was she just like... Was- she still is. And then Mia came along and it's almost like I gave birth to her, but she is eczema ridden, yeah, erratic, trouble, trouble jumping, car sick. The car dog's sick. fucking car sick. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Scratches herself, scratches to, herself to death to the point we have to moisturise her every mm. day. We've tried everything. She's cost us a fortune in the first yeah. room. Yeah, she she's gets, so cute though. She she's fucking you. unbelievably cute. But like, I just think you are so... She loves you so much. That every morning she comes to you and just wants... Nuzzle, nuzzle in the flaps, yeah. She yeah. does nuzzle in. She loves to be as close to me as possible. And she is just constantly... I'm watching her right now, just chew fucking... She just constantly has got to do something. Yeah. It's like she's got... Like she goes outside and if she just gets distracted, she has to eat something. Maybe she's secretly obese. Um, maybe she's got <laughs> cravings, I don't know. Yeah, but no, I do craving. think it's made, it made it so hard... Like, I also think time, like I always say, is just going so fast. By the time this podcast's yeah, done, I'm going to be like two years it older. Is, yeah, the, they do say that the world is rotating faster. Well, yeah, I just think it's all better. It just either, we mm. either just all gravitate and fucking be a bit more friendly to each other or we just... Yeah, or we just don't, or we don't, and we just kill each other with nuclear war. Let's do that. There's I just, just like, wouldn't want to know. Like, I just want my animals to have passed away by then so I don't have to like lose them as well. Like, yeah. I just, they've got to like have gone. episode of, what was that? Do you know what movie they're coming out with, which I cannot wait? Do you, did you ever watch 28 Days Later? A horrible movie. The horror movie. They're coming out with 28 Years Later. Or oh, was he still in The Fucking Rock? Was that the same movie? No, the one, 28 Days Later was the Danny Boyle movie with uh, Cillian Murphy, the uh, zombie one. Oh, I thought you were talking about the one where he got his arm stuck in the... <laughs> He's still there 28 years later. His arm's still stuck just in the chilling. rock. Just like, if anybody watched that weird one on Netflix that was where those girls climbed up a tower and then, like, fell... D- like, that was the most savagely heart-racing fucking movie we've watched. Surprisingly good, yeah. Like, who climbs up a tower like that, you dumb fucks? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Honestly. Very unbelievable, but very entertaining. No, but also not unbelievable, because the other day on my algorithm, like I said, like, on my feed came up this, like, 45 women who started doing parkour. Oh, yeah. And I thought, okay, I'm all for just trying things, but, like, please don't use the NHS's fucking funds when you've jumped off a fucking yeah, roof. Do you know what I mean? You've dislocated. Hip. You've got a hip replacement that you'll claim on the NHS. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But, like, I'm all for people being active, but she didn't look like she was... 
the most agile person to be doing parkour. Yeah, I think when you're picking it up at 45, your appetite for danger is probably not... <laughs> and the older you get, the harder the ground becomes. So at 45, you really, you really... That was like skiing. Like as a child, I was the cockiest fucking skier ever. And then like I had an injury when I was drunk and like went down and I like tore the ligaments in and then I just was like, I hate Didn't skiing. Didn't your uh, mother insert a ski up your anus? Oh, it wasn't... Okay, so this, I was obviously a cocky ass, bit of a cunt. Do you know what I mean? Love being a bit of a cunt. But... Um, I was skiing down and I cut everybody out of the way and I was going really fucking fast down the down the run and then obviously there was like a cliff edge and I went and I thought somebody had said to me like stop we're going down the other way so I stopped and then my mum came behind me and I was in like that sort of what's the word sheesh position what's the one to ski I can't remember where you crouch down and you effectively are like with your poles in front like this is such a pretentious chat you wouldn't know because you've never seen seen snow snow. I've only seen snow like three times and it was like in the poles and my mum's ski legitimately went into my ass cheeks to the point where I actually had a ski shape hideous but I couldn't sit down like a bruise like where I had a tip of a ski like on my ass yeah it was hilarious not so hilarious I think everybody injured themselves that holiday yes. that's the problem you pay to skiing get injured is very, in skiing uh, very high risk of injury I guess a lot of people ski like a lot of my clients didn't even know how to ski but they used to just like go and hang around in like Aspen really and like just start I really skiing until I started working in Chelsea and I met a gentleman his name was also Mark and his goal was I want to ski every day that the ski day season is open season. I was like <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing oh my god Mark that's because you don't ski in like fucking the desert do you yeah, well, you can't ski in Zimbabwe. No, you can't ski anywhere in Africa. Can you ski anywhere yeah, in Africa? Yeah, you can in the Drakensberg in South Africa. Surely, like Moroccan mountains, you'd probably oh, sure be able to ski. Sure, there are some places. Just probably wouldn't choose could. those to ski in. Japan's yeah. meant to be a mate. Well, my dad skied in Japan. I would love to ski in Japan. I would love to take you skiing. It's just like one of those things where I just would weigh up like sunshine I way more like, than being freezing. I think I'd be quite good at skiing because I weigh quite a lot and I'd quite like to go oh. fast. No, I don't think it works that way, Mark. No. I think the heavier you are, the, the slower you, you are. are. No. Yeah, Mass. but you, I reckon snowboarding I've tried like once and I just couldn't get to grips with that. But maybe I tried snowboarding. Mass equals EMC squared. A lot of people... Oh, shut the fuck up. I would love to see you on a pair of skis. Oh, honestly, we'll, we'll be back in the calf boots, do you know what I mean? You're no, going to be in no. A&E within seconds if we go mm. skiing. And we'll have to take out travel insurance. But, you know, I think skiing-wise... Part of my clients of mine used to go, but they used to just go and drink Whispering Angel on the mountains and yeah, just like think, get the ski um, lift up and down. Uh, yeah, by w- watching people on the ski holiday, I think the skiing's like twenty percent, and the boozing and the techno in between that is. Yeah, if you're not dancing 80%. on a table with like do your fucking ski kit on, are you even a fucking human? Like Damien's uh, family ski trips, like <laughs> debauch. <laughs> Yeah, fuck. Everybody, though, like, because you just drink. That's the whole thing you get. Once you've done your morning of skiing, it's booze. Yeah, I mean? to be fair, that, like, as a family holiday, that probably looked like one of the most entertaining holiday, family holidays I'd seen or witnessed on social media. Was. Yeah, because they're quite liberal as a family, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they are quite. I'd a, love to see your mum and dad skiing. That would be hilarious. Oh, no. No, that would just be a problem. Your mum would be complaining from day one, mm, do you know what I mean? Would, no, they wouldn't even see her in a ski suit. No, I don't think she's got the appetite for that. No, I don't know. I don't either. And I don't mm. have got no intention. Like, But it's weird, isn't it, how some people know how to ski and some people don't? It's quite a, prote- it's a very pretentious thing yeah, to do. Yeah, it's, like, uh, it's, it's not for, for poor people. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for poor people. But also, no. I don't think if you were poor, you'd want to put yourself in a situation where you have to pay fucking 300 pounds a day for like a ski pass in like mm. you know what i mean mm. and a chalet you know you'd be up there with prince andrew do you know what i mean everybody's got a chalet that's wealthy um mm. always got the chalet mm. well on that note yeah, on chalet that note. to us do you know what i mean the next chalet. time we'll be on the slopes if no we're prince not. andrew wanted to take me skiing i'd go with him well at this rate you're gonna get pissed on you're gonna piss on a man do you know what i mean yeah. one for the spank bank do you know what i mean Mm, I'm quite interested to see if they, you know, because sometimes if I, you know, if I don't drink enough water, oh, Mark. it's going to come out. It's going to come out a very interesting color, and I just don't know. If people have got the appetite for that. I'm sure people do, Mark, but I'm sure until you until you put yourself up on an account for goldenshowers.co.uk, I don't mm. think you're going to find out. But I'm sure Prince so Andrew my, knows. Yeah, my, um, yeah, Prince yeah. Andrew, unfortunately. Anyway, vague conversation today. Lots of 
random yeah. shit. Random. Lots of things about nutrition. Yeah. Um, on for another podcast soon, guys. So yeah. stay tuned and Have give us some one. feedback. And love you all. Okay, goodbye. Bye.